Hey everybody, it's Ann Quinn at Carnegie Public Library, and my guest today for Tell Me Your Story is Ray Anderson from Bel Air. And Ray is an educator, uh, you teach third grade. Third grade. And probably for the last six or seven years, I've had the privilege of teaching in his classroom junior achievement. I teach financial literacy, which is hilarious. Because <laughs> I'm not financially literate. Truth, truth be told, that's one of my highlights of the year. Uh, I swear, when you come, it's, it's yeah. definitely one of my highlights. I love it. And you know, and I found out that I really enjoyed the third grade age. Really? Through teaching that class. Mm -hmm. So we have gotten to know each other through this yearly exercise that mm -hmm. we go through. And it's always at the end of the year. So this year, because of stupid COVID, we didn't get an opportunity we to didn't. do junior junior achievement. So how's everything been going since Good. this crazy stuff is happening? Good. We, I mean, it was just a really odd way to finish the school year. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, for the teachers, we didn't really have that end of the year where you kind of have to say goodbye to your kids, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. we we did some neat things. We we went to their houses. And, oh, cool. Yeah. So, so, so so you did get to say goodbye yeah. to most. Don't I? We made cupcakes and giant cookies and took them. Just went by to see them, visit them, and check, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, so. you teach math mm -hmm. and uh, science. I teach math, science, and social studies. Okay. Yeah. But I do know, because your students have told me that you read to them. Yeah, I love reading. And uh, Ray, Mr. Anderson, has <laughs> a really cool classroom and an enviable reading setting. I mean, I love that. It's so... Because they have a wonderful sofa that you can just sink into and some other chairs. And I know it's the highlight because your students have told me they love it when you read to them. So tell me some of your favorite books that you like to read to a third grade audience. So. Because I hear that sometimes if yeah. it's really emotional, oh. you might oh, yeah. shed I'm, a tear. I'm a selfie. Because <laughs> I so cry too. You do too. I do too. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. But I think my favorite, like, See, I taught first grade for 10 years. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. okay. First grade. So so I had a love for, like, picture books, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I loved the depth that you find in, like, the third grade picture books mm -hmm. and the third grade chapter books. I think my favorite author is Patricia Polacco. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've got her books here. I love Which is, I like Pink and Say. Pink and Say makes me cry every, every time. time. Every time every I cry. Every time when, when they come off the porch and he says Momo Bay to his mom that she mm -hmm. was just shot. And I, mm -hmm. yeah, I get real emotional. And, you know, it, I don't hide that from the kids. That's wonderful. Yeah, they I need to them, see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was a point in my career where I got National Board Certified in Reading. Oh, I didn't know that yeah. either. Yeah, so my wife and I both did. And through that process, one of the things I learned is, is you have to have the kids hone into their emotions when they read. So like, you want them to bust out laughing. You want them to cry if it's sad. You want them to feel it. And, and that's, so like, I tried to really push that, you know, like make a, make a connection somehow with the author or with the story or with the mm -hmm. character so that you would feel what they felt, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm, I always and that comes easily for like people like you and I, but mm -hmm. I can imagine for some people that's hard, that to, hard. to touch into their emotion. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you like Pink, Pink and Sunday, say, but what's another? Sunday. Chicken uh, Sunday. Yep, yep, yep. Chicken that's Sunday, I love that. Um, I love the chapter book. I love um, Wilford. No, um, hold on, that, I'll take you back to that one. What's the one with the rabbit? Edward oh, Tulane, oh, the, the Miraculous, miraculous journey, journey at Edward Tulane, with, by Kent and, Camilla. Mm -hmm, and I've told more adults I, I've to read that. Over that. Yeah, I've told more adults to read that book yeah, because you could read, an adult could sit and read that in an evening. Mm -hmm. But it's life changing, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of book that you should pick up once a year and read it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it applies to all of us. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, what was your routine at school? Like, did you read to them at first thing, before lunch, after lunch, at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. So when I would do read aloud. Read aloud has always been my favorite time. Mm -hmm. It's always been my most favorite. And like you, like you said, I, my classroom is set up kind of like a living room. Mm -hmm. So everybody's comfortable. And on Fridays, the, the sofa actually pulls into a bed. Out yes. to a, yeah. <laughs> so we pull it out on Fridays and, and everybody just, sits on it. And it's a bunch of people. Yeah. But we want that feeling where you feel like you're sitting and watching a good movie. Mm -hmm. The same thing. So I've always told them, you know, when you're reading a book, you want to feel like you're watching a movie. You want to get comfortable and mm -hmm. and and if if a part wants to make you throw your head back and bust out laughing while you're reading, do it. 
I love that. I learned that from my mom. Okay, so she was a big influence in oh, your life. Huge. I can still, like, I can remember from the time I was tiny to the time I left home, she would, she would sit on the floor in the kitchen next to the heater. We had a heater that came out of the wall. And she would sit there and she would just read for hours and hours and hours. Well, were you a lucky child? Yeah, she loved and Was she an books. educator? No. Stay she just mom. loved books. Mm -hmm. So she, did she take you to the public library in your town? That's funny you say that because just the other day I was talking about that. I, I spent lots of time there. But you know, as a kid, it's funny, as a kid I didn't love reading. I didn't, I didn't develop that love for reading until, honestly, I became a teacher. Mm -hmm. It's it's weird. I I just I didn't love it. Like I can remember the books that I enjoyed, like Curious George. Mm -hmm. That's one that pops into my head as a kid. But no, I didn't. I don't think that I appreciated reading like I should have, mm -hmm. like I could have. Now, I know we're stereotyping here, mm -hmm. which is not good. But I have found that boys, in general, mm -hmm. are just not the readers that girls are. Mm -hmm. Do you find that to be true? Or I I do think that's. I mean I. In my experience of teaching, I think girls enjoy reading more. I think they do. My husband says the same thing that you did. He didn't read a lot when he was a kid in school, mm -hmm. but as an adult, you know, it just took over. Mm -hmm. And so he reads just as much as I do. Oh, really? Yeah. What does he like to read? Oh, uh, actually, he reads a lot of nonfiction, and he reads a lot of um, boring business books. <laughs> he's, a, he's a statistician. <laughs> so he reads a lot of things like that, but for fun, he does like to read things like Lee Childs, mm -hmm. a lot of um, adventure, spy stuff, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you reading anything in particular right now? You know, it's funny because I, got, I have this personality that doesn't stick on one thing. So Me too. You're the same? Mm -hmm. So I might go through a phase where I love like John Grisham and then it'll go to like, you know, reading biographies and mm -hmm. right now I like because it's summer, I love reading about plants and okay. herbs. Are and you a gardener? Like, yeah, I love it. Okay. Yeah. Good. We have uh you can give me some advice later. We have a garden in the, next to the building. Oh you do? And I'm supposed to think of some um different things to do for the garden, so I need some inspiration yeah, we'll on talk. that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk gardening. Okay. So, can you remember any of those books that your mother read to you when you were little? Was there a certain character or uh, genre of books, or did no, you just I, like it all? I specifically remember The Curious George. I can remember her reading that to me. I remember going to the library as a kid, school, and, and, I, and I can remember walking at my school library as an elementary student. I remember that the very first day we walked into the library and she, I can't recall her name, but I remember that she told us, like, you know, she got it quiet and she told us that this, this room in the school is extra special because she has treasures here in this room. And the books were her treasures that she's found and that, you know, we had to treat them like they are a treasure. So I, I knew as a young kid that books were special. I knew it was something special. but. And, and even like I said, going to the library as a kid, our, our local library like this, the public library, and we would spend hours. My, my mom would go up to the adult section, I'd go down to the kids section, and I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Did you like Dr. Seuss? You know what? Not until I got older. I hated him as a kid. It's because for me it didn't make much sense. I couldn't, I couldn't like, like I told you, I, I like things that I can, I can relate to the character, I can feel the emotion they feel. And I just didn't get that with Dr. Seuss. You know? I, I didn't, as an adult, when I read to children now, I can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And But at the time, I found the art disturbing. Really? It, it filled me with anxiety. That cat and the hat tearing up that house. Yeah. <laughs> Which Isn't that something? Filled with how anxiety. people are so different? Because some people love it. Yes. The cat and the hat and green eggs and ham. And when I go to the schools and I talk to the preschool kids, mm -hmm. I always say, well, what do you like? And they almost always say, Curious, Curious George, George, just like you. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, um, Dr. Seuss. And I just find that interesting because as a, as a young child, I remember thinking, oh, no, mm -hmm. I do not like that. Another book that I can remember, and I, I, I can't specifically remember the name of it, but it didn't have any words. The whole book. A wordless book. It was a wordless book. But I can, I can kind of recall certain pictures. I'm a visual person, mm -hmm. so I can, I can remember certain pictures through the book. Um, but yeah, it didn't have any words. Once again, using your imagination. So, 
That's Do you find that when you go and see a movie mm -hmm. and you've read the book, I almost always find the movie's disappointing. Not as good. It's not as good. It may yeah. be a good. It may be a. It may be mm -hmm. good, but not as good mm -hmm. as that book. And I think it's because we've got great imaginations. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you you go there. You create what what's happening and what the character looks like and yeah. everything. That's one of the reasons why I love Patricia Polacco, is because she's so descriptive. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the reason why she's so descriptive in her books is because you probably already know this, but she's usually in the book. Like her, her, it might be about her as a child, but one of the characters throughout her stories is usually her. I didn't know that. I didn't. So that's going to make me curious to go back. Is she in Pink and Say? There's a part in Pink and Say. Yeah, it's it's it goes into her heritage and her relatives. Okay. So at the end of the book, when it says a relative of this person, a relative of this person, and this person holds okay. the hand. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Now, after you leave, I'm going to pull her books out uh -huh. and I'm going to read them. It's neat. What about magazines? I am so into magazines. Are you? Yes. Like, are you them. into like the smut? Are you like people magazines? All that kind of stuff. <clears throat> yeah. You know, like the yes, gossip, I did. Inquirer yeah. and all that. Not inquire. Not inquire. I'm a little. My standards are a little higher. For what I call those kind of frivolous magazines, I like Vanity Fair oh, okay. and People. And yes, I do read those. So you know what's going on with all this I stuff. I do know what's going on. But as the older I get, though, I find I go, who are these people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of these musicians. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, I love Atlantic Magazine for a more serious magazine that covers topical things. Mm -hmm. Atlantic, which has been around since the days of Lincoln. Huh. Um, that is a venerable magazine, but it's very readable because I yeah. find um, certain magazines are just so hard to read. Yeah, I agree. You know, like mm -hmm. and you, it feels like a textbook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like Men's Health magazine. That's a, that's an excellent. Actually, mm -hmm. I've been inspired by Men's really? Health. Yeah. One of the things I love about that is the articles aren't long. Right. Short. So you can get short little blurbs. Mm -hmm. and that's what I, I love. Yeah, I like Oprah Winfrey. I mm -hmm. read that. What about your wife Dawn? Is she a, uh, or about your daughters? I bet were they, uh, when they were at home, were they in like a Seventeen magazine or Tiger you know, Beat? I, I, <laughs> be, I don't think magazines were their thing because their phones. Yeah, yeah. So it was a different, it's They're a different going generation. By the wayside. So they could yeah. read all that stuff on, online. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where like I, I prefer, I prefer a book in my hand. Me too. The magazine or the book or the newspaper. I love a newspaper. Yeah. And that's going by the wayside. Yeah. But I still, and I know you can you can read the newspaper mm -hmm. online, but I like the ritual of having that paper it's not the and same. I fold I it. Yeah. Do you have a Kindle or a I tablet? Do, do you I like do. that? Uh, I, I don't mind using it, but I prefer the book. You too. But, right? but if I'm sitting in the doctor's office, I'll take my Kindle because mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to touch the magazine <laughs> in the doctor's office. When I travel, I want that because it's too hard to lug because uh, I read so fast. Mm -hmm. I have to lug five books with me on really? vacation. So are you, so do you go through a book quickly? I do. You do? I go very rapidly and um, sometimes too rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so I know when I'm in a really good book, Ray, when I don't want that story to end, really? and I want to stay in that world, mm -hmm. and then I, f I force myself to slow down. Mm. And that's when I go, I have got a dynamite book. But if I read something like The Red October mm -hmm. by, um, who's that author? It's, it's like a lot of adventure to it, but he talks a lot about submarines, oh, yeah. and it's technical. Uh, Nelson, no, it's not Nelson DeMille. Isn't that the movie with Sean Connery? I think so. Yeah. But when it gets into technical detail about submarines, I'm going to skim it. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Those are details you don't need. So I'm a skimmer. Oh, okay. So, and I know that in school, though, mm -hmm. you sometimes you need to read deeper and you mm -hmm. don't need to skim necessarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. I had a, I always had a problem as, as a kid. One of the reasons I didn't enjoy reading as a young, you know, kid in, in middle school and high school is because I would read a whole page in a book. And not know what you read. I have no idea. So it wasn't until I got older and learned how to teach reading that, that I learned how to, like I said, make those connections, those, those emotional connections and personal connections with characters, and then you can remember it. I still have problems with things like a science book. I can remember reading a whole entire chapter, and because I, I read so fast. Mm -hmm. 
but I would have no idea what I've read. And right. if it's if it's technical information, see that's hard to wrap your emotions around that because oh, it's yeah. technical information yeah. and it's yeah. so boring. Yeah, and if you're an emotional, like you said, you cry or you laugh. So you're you're looking for those characters that you can relate to. And yeah. So informational stuff's probably not. Well, some, some like if it's to do with politics or biography, I am so into it. Oh, really? Like right now, there's all kinds of mm -hmm. political books oh, yeah. I am so oh, into. Too many, right? Yeah, too way too many. <laughs> Guess what side I'm on? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It just depends what it is. And what about social? You teach social studies too. Do yeah. kids? Um, are you finding that kids? That was the one subject I was a history major. Mm -hmm. I loved hands down. Because really? it's a story. That's mm -hmm. what history is. Mm -hmm. It's a story. Mm -hmm. What are you finding kids today? Of course, you're doing you know young level third grade, mm -hmm. but do they enjoy it, or is it sort of somewhat of a chore? Or they may enjoy language arts, but history is. You know, I would say they they probably, and I don't teach a lot of the history part of social studies. It's more about when you come with junior achievement, so it's mm -hmm. the economics and that type of thing. But um, yeah. It, I don't know that it's something that they love, mm -hmm. social studies, um, but they they do they love science. It's very hands on. Really? Yeah. Okay. They, you know, it's something that. And do you enjoy teaching it? I do. I I think I think I love the big, the language. I like the reading and I love the math. So I've been a math teacher now for about seven or eight years, and I I really I love the math. You know that's unusual because you're doing a hard science and a humanity, and mm -hmm. usually people stick with. The humanities or the hard sciences, and you're able to mix it up. So that's pretty. I good. just like trying to make it fun. I hated math girl as a kid. I did too. Despised it. I wasn't good at it. Me either. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I like, I just like the challenge of saying I'm going to get these kids to love it. I'm going to yeah. get them to love. I tell them the first day, you know what, you might not like math. I guarantee you, you will love it by the end of the year. You know, try to make it fun. Yeah, I, and I, I've seen you in action, so I know you do. In third grade here in the Washington Courthouse, do many of your children have uh, phones? Do they have cell phones? And are they using social media a lot already mm. in third grade? What do you think? I'm just curious. Um, third grade, because to me that seems so So it's so like young. eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe a quarter of your students have a phone. I would say almost all of them. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. More than a quarter. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then what do they want to watch? Mm. What do they, what do right. they, are they into TikTok? So have, that's what it is. Have you heard about TikTok? I've heard about it. I've yeah. heard not some really good things about it. I don't know a whole, I mean, my kids are, I have a 25 year old and a 23 year old daughter. And so this is definitely for the younger child. I thought, but I think. It's changing? Yeah, I think that the high school kids are kind of into it. And I just noticed like recently some adults are even kind of through this quarantine period. I've noticed that there are some adults that are even doing TikToks. And, okay. Yeah, I don't. I, have, I'm not, I don't understand it enough to wrap my head around what's going on. <laughs> but like, even the, even these third graders, they they're they're on Instagram. They have Facebook. They yeah. Do they use it? Are they allowed to use it in the classroom? No, no. So no. do you say it's got to go in your locker? So they keep it in their they keep it in their cubby or their book bag. Um, it's a different world today. So. You know, at the end of the day, the kids, when it's time to pack up and get ready to go home, they'll get their book bag, unzip, get their phone out, and check to see if mom left a message. You know, where are they supposed to go home after school? Or are they supposed to? So it's just a different. It's a wow, different world. You know. Is. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, now I'm going to sound like an old fogey. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't have that. Oh yeah. Growing up, I'm glad that I didn't have the temptations or. Mm -hmm. I just see so many problems. Oh, you're it. so right. So I think what it's done, I think that what technology has done, um, there's good, there's some good oh, sure. about it. But one of the things I think it's done is it's exposed our kids to way too much at a young age. Mm -hmm. So they're just not that, they lose that naive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll tell you this too, the kids that don't have the telephones mm -hmm. and that don't have the exposure, tell a difference you can mm -hmm. yeah so they're more they're more naive they they they're still little they're still like little boys and little girls Does that make sense? they haven't been exposed mm -hmm. to these things mm -hmm. the language the you know the, what they're seeing the, the music the, mm -hmm. so yeah.
Does it, do you need it in second grade? Or is it like third grade's the threshold where yeah. everybody gets it? No, but are I, you seeing this in first and second grade? Well, see, our building starts in third grade. Oh, that's true. So you don't know. So I don't see a lot of that. But I, I know that the, some of the siblings, like I have kids that have siblings at Cherryville, and, you know, they have phones. I don't know how, how often, how prevalent it is there. But, yeah, third grade, it's, it's not uncommon yeah. for, for most of them to have one. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Another question I'm interested in, because I have always have loved bookstores. Mm -hmm. Is there a bit of bookstore mm -hmm. that you love to go to? Like I even like Barnes and Noble. I do too. I enjoy that, but I'm thinking particularly mm -hmm. in college towns and other places that I've lived, really unique, mm -hmm. fabulous bookstores. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm sure you've been to, in German Village. Yes. The Book Loft. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah, I love that place. Um, and I find it overwhelming. It's, it's so much. It's so much. Mm -hmm. So my daughter went to school in Alabama, mm -hmm. and we go down to visit her. And she took us to this. Um, she keeps making noise. She took us to this little book place, and it was like a, it was like a, a book place coffee shop, mm -hmm. both, um, and they sold like cookies and, and, and muffins and things like that. But it was the it was the coolest place. So you walk throughout this building, the store, it was, it was not huge, it was small, but you would go up a set of steps and turn and it would stop right there. It wouldn't go all the way up and there would be like a pillow on the steps and you would sit there and there'd be somebody sitting there reading with a, like a light coming out of the wall. Oh, and then, I like that. Oh, it was just, and then you, there were little nooks and crannies throughout the whole place. Yeah. So you could sit with a group of two or three people if was you wanted. Was this in Birmingham? It was in Birmingham. Yeah. Or there's a small area right close by called Homewood. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think it was in Homewood. But yeah, just such a neat, really. And I have thought a thousand times in this town, the buildings we have in this town, I thought, how neat if we made a place like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a cool library. But a place that where you could... Okay, so when you retire, when I retire, mm -hmm. let's open up a bookstore. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, there's too many empty places in this town that yeah. could be turned into something like that. You know what I mean? And I always believe, of course, I'm a huge believer in public libraries, but we all want to own our own books, too. Mm. And that's important for me to own my books. So. Do you have a library at home? Uh, Ray, I moved about three years ago from Sabina mm -hmm. to here in Washington Courthouse. And we had a lot of built-in bookcases, mm -hmm. and we sold. I took them to half-price books. Oh, did you really? In Columbus, we made a lot of money. We sold about fifteen hundred books. You're kidding. I had, it, and it took us several trips, and we would fill the car, the back seat, the trunk filled, and then we would drive up to half-price books, sell them. Wow. Next week, load up again. Really? And part of me regrets. Mm -hmm. um, Downsizing, but I just didn't have the room in the condo uh, that I have now. Uh -huh. So you had to be picky and choosy. Well. I had to be picky, but I still have a lot of books. So what's the what's the I want to say three. What's the one book that you would never sell? Oh, that's a very good question. I can, I can tell you because I talked about this in other other um, interviews. Mm -hmm. Came Mutiny by Herman Woke. Oh, really? And it's a World War II story. And how long have you had it? Uh, well, my parents owned it since I was in high school. Oh, you're kidding. And I discovered it on their bookshelves when I was in high school, and it had such a profound influence. And then later he wrote Winds of War and War and Remembrance, and I was in my early 20s then. Hmm. And I am such a fan of Herman Woke, who just died about two years ago at the age of 103. And his books, and I can even name more, uh, Marjorie Morningstar and Inside Outside, all by him. He is the quintessential storyteller, and he made a 15-year-old girl, when I first started reading him, care about World War II really? and what life was like huh. on a battleship. Who? That's a masterful storyteller mm -hmm. that would draw me into that world at oh, 15. Yeah. Yeah. He was, a, it is, no, was a great storyteller. Never, what about you? I never read. I never read that. But what are the three you would say? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm turning it around on you. See, I probably. I probably, for, I know this sounds silly, but one would be Edward Tulane, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Just because I told you, I feel like that book, even as a grown man, I feel like that's a book that I can read, and I feel like it can change you each time you read it. I feel like it makes you reflect and makes you a better person. Mm -hmm. And we talk about that with the kids, you know, this, 
so the journey is him finding himself and learning how to love. Mm -hmm. And over a span of what about a hundred years? I don't even remember. I don't remember what it was, but just well, I don't think it was that long because it was there was a little girl that owned him. Oh, and she gets him. And she. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you remember the end? I do. I kind of gave. Yes, <laughs> I do. That that is an amazing book. Yeah, and, and, the way that, that. and the way that that author ends that book, mm -hmm. just with a few words, it kind of. Like there's certain, like that book, the way that book ended reminds me of the line in To Kill a Mockingbird when Scout says, well, hey, boo, because the door opens a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, that's a, there, you know, hey, boo, there you go. She there. humanized him. Yeah. yeah. I saw that on Broadway. Did you? Oh, well, here's the actor that plays Atticus Finch. Um, yes. Um, I've seen him on TV. Yeah, and, I, and I'm going to be honest, I thought... I, I went into it thinking he's not going to be a good Atticus no, Finch. He doesn't Nobody look, can do Gregory Peck. No, no, no. He doesn't look yeah. like Gregory Peck. Um, and I thought you can't beat him. But I'm not going to lie, it was unbelievable. I've seen it was just enough snippets to. Oh, you saw it on Broadway. Saw it on Broadway, and we sat. It was a gift for my wife, a Christmas gift, and we sat with hundreds of people in there, and there wasn't a dry eye. It was so good. It was so good. And that story is just so good. Oh, it was so good. And, it, I mean, I'm just thinking right now how much it applies to the world we're in right now. Right. Right now. It, very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you and Don going on vacation? We somewhere? had to cancel our spring break trip because of the COVID. COVID, yeah. Um, it was to Cancun, and we rescheduled that for next year. Okay. Um, we're talking about going this summer if things clear up a little more, to Denver. Okay. I've never been to Denver. And she has, and she says, Ray, you would love it. She's, she said, I would love it. Do you read when you go on vacation? Are you going, are you sightseeing and doing more? Or are you more like a beach I'm a person? relaxed person. I'm a, I'm a relaxer. Like, okay. I, I mean. I don't want to go, 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 yeah, go, go, go. To me, that's not vacation if I'm, if, there, if it's schedule, 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 what, what's on the agenda for today, what's, yeah. but. With that being said, I think there's different types of vacations. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Cancun is a relaxed vacation. But I do think if we go to Denver, I think there's Dawn has some things that she wants us to yeah. go horseback Is the whole riding. family going or just you and Just Dawn? the two of us. Okay. Yeah. How nice. I know. Yeah. Well, we'll have to talk later about what books you should... Do you use a Kindle at all? I don't or like it. You don't like it? Yeah. I like a book. Okay. I like to turn the page. I like to smell the, smell of the book. Yeah. Pages and, yeah. I don't want anything too ambitious.